Hi there, it's me again. I have never been as broken as I have during the past few months. I made many bad decisions, hurting others and myself. And I have never felt so lost and alone and ready to give up. This Kyoto solo trip helped me to regain my inner calm, feel empowered, and find the strength to face what was still about to come. Join me on my healing journey. I started the trip with puffy eyes from excessive crying. I had booked my bullet train tickets and a capsule hotel for two nights on the previous evening. This all-girl capsule hotel caught my eye since it was designed by a Finnish designer and being half Finnish myself, maybe it also made me feel a bit homey. The price quality ratio was also extremely good and I ended up extending my stay for one more night. I hadn't really planned my trip at all and I wasn't even sure how long I'd be gone. Kyoto felt like a good place to find some zen energy. Even if it tends to get a bit crazy with tourists, I knew I'd be able to find calming temples and gardens here. I've been to Kyoto several times before, but I have never been able to explore it at my own pace. After grabbing a baked potato lunch at this cute little place, I headed to a temple I had never been to before. This is actually my very first time solo traveling, if you don't count day trips. I came to Kyoto to find inner calm and decided I would not rush anything. I walked around and sat down for a long time at the Kenninji Temple, feeding my brain with good thoughts while listening to empowering podcasts. I love traditional Japanese tea houses and this matcha warabi mochi was just the thing I needed as an afternoon pick-me-up. The last time I came to Fushimi Inari Taisha was before the Japanese borders were open for tourists and I have to say, I was not prepared for the amount of people. It was intense. But after power walking for 15 minutes or so, the path got a lot calmer, allowing me to enjoy moments of solitude while following the endless stream of red torii gates. I came here partially because I find the red torii gates aesthetically pleasing but also because I wanted to just have a good walk and for the first time, I reached the summit of Fushimi Inari. As the sun set, I loved how the path started feeling slightly eerie and mysterious. As I was walking towards the train station, we started talking with this lovely American girl who was also solo traveling and we ended up grabbing dinner together and going to a super cozy shop as well. Good morning, it is Friday. I'm gonna start the morning by doing a bit of work. I'm feeling uh, not better than on the day that I came to Kyoto. So, solo traveling, you should do it. Before coming to Kyoto, I felt that my mind was foggy with all the challenges and drama I was facing back in Tokyo, as well as just negative self-talk switching my environment, doing exactly what I want to do and realizing how empowered and good I can feel being by myself really helped me to get out of the negative mindset I had. During my solo travels, I actually was also taking a break from Instagram, which I think helped me to properly detach and forget about everyone else 
and just focus on myself. Instead of browsing on my phone, I spend a lot of time listening to uplifting podcasts and audiobooks, and also just sitting with my thoughts or thinking about my future dreams and goals. Good morning, it's another sunny day in Kyoto. I'm gonna grab a scooter. If you've ever been to Kyoto, you might know that the Kyoto train network is not very extensive. During this trip, I realized that scooters tend to be faster and similar in price to buses. And at least in my opinion, it's more fun to ride a scooter around the city. Would recommend. I wanted to grab a breakfast onigiri at this cute place, but sadly, it was still closed when I arrived, so I ended up going to a nearby cafe first. The owner was this very friendly Japanese guy, and I had a fun breakfast chat with him while enjoying my morning coffee. I had heard of this onigiri place through a friend, and I loved the cute vibe. Currently, they only do takeaway, so I went to a nearby park to enjoy my second breakfast. On this day, I visited three Zen gardens. I remember it as a day when I was truly happy. It's typical to think that the best moments happen with loved ones, but I was alone and in this moment, it felt perfect. I really loved the tatami rooms that Shinsendo and Enkoji had, overlooking a beautiful Zen garden. In total, I sat in silence for three hours on this day, just letting my thoughts flow, listening to my inner voice, listening to the wind in the trees. After all the chaos I had been through, this deep sense of peace and stillness and disconnection from my problems brought me great comfort. I wish I knew a place like this in Tokyo. Continuing my journey, I headed to this cute cafe for an afternoon treat. I came to this Japanese style cafe or kisaten because I had seen this in the magazine. I liked the unique interior, but since the cafe was full, I headed to another cozy cafe. I really love the atmosphere, and if I lived in Kyoto, I think I'd come here often to work on my laptop or just to chill. Feeling adventurous, I finished the evening by listening to a very experimental music performance. Not my typical choice, but I found the contrast between chaos and peace enthralling.
I started my Sunday with the most perfect piece of Ankobasa toast. Determined to continue my hunt for more Zen energy, I came to Dioanji, a rock garden I have visited twice before and have always loved. Unlucky for me, I came at the same time with a massive school group. However, I was determined to not let school kids spoil this experience for me, so I sat in a quieter area and followed a guided meditation from my phone while waiting for the rock garden area to calm down. This rock garden used to be my favorite spot in Kyoto because of the sense of calm I had experienced here on my previous visits. Now, the less popular hidden Zen goddess might be rivaling this one. After a nice nourishing healthy lunch in this cafe bakery, I headed back to the hotel to enjoy a treat I grabbed from the bakery with self-made matcha. I have to say, even if I'm an avid sencha drinker, this was my first time making a cup of matcha, so I had no clue if I did it correctly. In Osaka, I decided to stay at another capsule hotel. Although I have to say, the one in Kyoto was far nicer. I met my Japanese cousin and her family for some afternoon tea, after which I walked around absorbing the hustle and bustle of Osaka and stopped for dinner at this udon place my cousin had recommended. Hungry for a treat to finish off the day, I headed to the Daimaru department store and got myself a piece of chestnut flavored Mont Blanc cake. Good morning. I am in Wakayama in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I'm supposed to start hiking, but I'm not sure which way to go. I was kind of assuming that they would have signs here like telling you where to go, but I don't know. I'm just like literally at the train station in the middle of nowhere with nothing. <laughs> and I'm the only one who left at this station. So let's see. Found a sign. I'm on the right route. I really wanted to do some hiking because I just find uh, being in a forest very calming and I really needed to <laughs> find more Zen energy uh, which is also why I wanted to go to Kyoto I didn't really plan this trip very well which is why I don't really have any hiking gear I am wearing just like really random clothing this trip is just doing whatever I feel like doing going wherever I feel like going which has been really good it has been very good for my mental health being a lot more balanced one thing that you might want to note if you decide to do this hike by yourself is that apparently there are bears and you should be carrying a bear bell with you but I don't know about that I don't have a bear bell with me let's hope that I don't run into any bears that wouldn't be fun especially since I'm alone so when it comes to the whole road it's quite long but if you want to make it shorter you can start from like other stations and I started from the last station so this is like the shortest route that I'm doing I came to like a resting spot has quite nice views welcome to my snack hall I brought onigiri natto maki and dashimaki tamago so egg on there and chocolate almonds I thought I would have a little lunch break. I think I will save the natto maki for later. It's been a nice hike, I would say. I haven't come across anyone else 
of course that's very nice because that means that I can just have a lovely time by myself. It was also surprisingly easy to come from Osaka and took like one and a half hours. So it's not that far. If you're in Osaka, if you feel like doing a hike, would recommend it. Guys, I made it to Daimon. Well done, me! So, Koyasan or Mount Koya is the center of Shingon Buddhism, and at the top of the mountain, there is a small secluded temple town that was first founded around 1200 years ago. Koyasan is one of the best places to experience an overnight stay at a temple lodging and try the vegetarian monk cuisine known as Shojin Jori. Considered the holiest location in Koyasan, along the two kilometer part of Mount Kobodaisi's mausoleum are more than 200,000 tombstones and commemorative monuments. There's something striking about how timeless this place is, how the history was so tangible, imagining how each tombstone had once been new and important to someone, and how hundreds of years later those stones are still here, but forgotten and covered in moss. I had come here once before with my family, 11 years ago, on a misty, rainy day. The gloomy weather made the forest feel even more mystical. Crossing the final bridge before the mausoleum signifies entering a sacred area, and people are not allowed to take photos after this point. My first visit to Koyasan 11 years ago had already left a very deep impression, but coming here now, alone, I think this is now one of my favorite places in Japan. So, I took my sweet time at Koyasan and when I was done, I realized that the buses were not running anymore. I don't have a way of getting back without walking quite a bit. I need to take the Furuzaka trail to get down from the mountain to a railway station. I've done quite a bit of walking today, so I am feeling quite tired. I was originally planning to go to a jazz gig in Osaka, but obviously that is not happening. At least I'm getting back. It would have been a disaster if I didn't have a way to get back. Check your schedules beforehand. Don't wing it maybe as much as I did in the middle of the mountains. Another thing that's slightly worrying is a very low on phone battery. If something were to happen, I might be in trouble. <laughs> Actually, I'm just sad that I can't listen to podcasts or something. I love listening to podcasts while I'm walking. Oh dear, the signs are telling me not to go forward from here, but sorry, I'll have to disobey that since I need to get home. Wish me luck! Oh, I don't know if you can see it's too dark. <laughs> but I made it! Yay! I survived! That's the train station. It's very quiet. What the f was that? I hope that was a very loud bird. I was ravenous by the time I made my way back to Osaka but I was determined to get a taste of real Osaka okonomiyaki so I joined the queue for this place. I got a tsukimi mochi and cheese okonomiyaki and it was the perfect way to end the day.
I started my final solo travel day with a delicious cup of coffee and a slice of banana bread and by spending a moment to think about my future goals. I have to say, even if this trip didn't change anything about my situation, it really helped me to detach from everything that was happening in my life at the moment. Pretty much ever since I turned 30 in January, I've been on a roller coaster and my life turned upside down. My longest relationship ended in May and I fell into depression in June, which heavily affected my brain and my ability to think clearly and function. Being relatively new to Japan, I also struggled with feeling very alone and not knowing who I could rely on. I have never cried as much as I did. This year has without a question been the most difficult year of my life. I'm editing this video almost three months after filming this content and I still had some dark times ahead of me after this trip. But after months of crying, therapy, meditation, educational audiobooks, uplifting podcasts and basically shifting my way of thinking on quite a fundamental level, I can finally say that the clouds are clearing, I'm breathing and I'm starting to feel like myself again. Actually, not just like my former self. I feel that all the pain that I had to go through has taught me so, so much and made me a better version of myself. I finally understood how important it is to listen to my inner voice and to live authentically, choosing what I want and not just doing the so-called right thing. After months of extreme feelings of guilt, worthlessness and punishing myself, I'm at a place where I truly believe that I too deserve to be happy and that it is my responsibility to choose my own happiness. Even if it might ruffle some feathers, I am truly grateful for it all. I hope you enjoyed joining me on my healing journey. I truly wish that today you're being truthful to yourself and what you want in life and that you choose to live accordingly. Remember to like and subscribe if you liked this video, it really helps me. Hopefully see you in the next one. Sending you loads of love.